All right, so let's take a look at your chapter two homework. This is gonna be question number one. And on this particular problem, uh, they want you to figure out what the amounts, how the amounts affect the fundamental accounting equation. So you notice that we've got cash, lab equipment, lab supplies, loan payable, and accounts payable. So remember the first three, cash and equipment and supplies, all those are gonna be considered assets. So you notice down below here, they added up those three assets and they got 123,200. And then of course, anything that says payable on it is gonna be a liability. So you got loan payable and accounts payable. So you got 15,200 and 9,900. If they add those two together, then they came up with that 25,100. So then your next question might be, well, how do you get the equity? Well, let me just kind of illustrate on this problem. Remember the equation, let me write this out up at the side here. So you got assets equals liabilities plus equity. So if you know you've got assets, uh, what's it, 123,200, you set that equal to your liabilities, which is 25,100, and then plus, I'll just put E for equity. And so to figure out this equity, what you simply have to do is subtract that from the 123,200 to make the equation balance. And down below, that's how they came up with this 98,000. 100. So if you want to kind of verify it, if you take the 25,100 plus the 98,100, you add those two together and then that's going to give you the 123,200. And of course, that's your accounting equation. All right, so that is problem number one. Let me clear that out. And let me get to the next one. Let's check out question number two. All right, and I'm gonna change my stylus ink to red. I like that better, right? So on this one, this is gonna be essentially, the answer says the fundamental accounting equation for several businesses follows supply of the missing amount. So again, this is the, the final answer for the one you're looking at, but I just wanna highlight that if you notice for whether you're looking at one through five, notice again, assets equals liabilities plus equity. And you notice every time everything on the left side of the equation should equal everything on the right side of the equation added together. So anytime there's a missing amount, most of the time you're gonna either have to subtract or in some cases add, but the goal is, is to make sure this equation balances. But just remember your total assets on the left side of the equation should equal everything on the right side of the equal sign, which is liabilities plus your equity. All right, so that was number two. All right, so let's let me comment. Let's go to number three. Let me comment on this one. And on this one, um, they give you five transactions. One, two, three, four, five, actually there's six. And they want you to figure out how these, these appear on the, uh, on the balance sheet. So I'll start with the first one. And you'll notice that it says, well down here you got all the answers, but up here it says, you've got O's 42,000 to uh, the Sanderson Equipment Company. So anytime they say O's, that's gonna go into liability. Even though you see this as your final answer, you're gonna have a couple of these, so I'll get to that in a minute. But this first one would be a liability. So you put that 42,000 under most likely accounts payable. The next one says cash balance of 31,000. Notice right there, that's cash. That's gonna go under an asset. The next one says dental supplies of 11,003. That's another asset. So that's gonna go right there under your assets. Remember the definition of your assets is you know, anything that you own or that has a benefit to the company. Think of, think of potential benefit like cash, supplies, equipment, that kind of stuff. Those are all gonna be assets. Uh, four says O's, another again 12,360 to this furniture supplies. That would go under your accounts payable liability. And then finally, you've got a couple, you got dental equipment, that's another asset. So they put that one here under your assets. And then you've got office furniture which is another asset that's gonna go right there. So you notice they added up these assets. They got 119,004. Notice that's everything on the left side of the equation. You have two liabilities, the 42,000 plus the 12,360 gives you the 54,360. So that's your total liabilities. And then the last thing you would then do, and I'm just gonna circle these with my stylus is, now that you've got your total assets of 119,004, you've got your total liabilities of 54,360. To get this number right there, that's gonna be what we call your plug number. I'll say plug. You simply just subtract. So you take the 119,400, which is your total assets, subtract out the 54,360, 
and then that's going to give you the 65,040. So that's how you do that one. All right, let's take out the number three in your homework. This is number three. Let's check out number uh, question number four. And on this one, again, you've got eight more transactions. And again, this is all plugging these into the accounting equation. And in this case, there's eight of them. And down below, notice, I'll just start with number one. Um, and by the way, they, they have what this called the expanded, the expanded accounting equation, where they list the individual assets individually. They don't just say assets. And the same thing as your liabilities, they call accounts payable. And then under equity, remember there's, there's at least four equity transactions, but on this one, we only have three, but you have your capital for your investments, you have revenue, and then you have expenses. So, and remember when we're recording effects of the equation, you always have to have at least two items affected for the equation to always balance. So number one, uh, you have an investment into the business of 120,000. So notice they added cash, so increased cash, and then they have to increase capital. So notice there's always two effects. You plus 120 on the asset side and you plus 120 on the equity side and your balance right there. All right, that would be number one. Number two says purchased equipment for 44,000 on credit. That means accounts payable. You, you're, low, you're taking on a, a small loan to buy this equipment. So the two effects are you bought an asset, which is equipment. So there's your equipment 44,000 plus. You didn't pay cash yet. so you have to increase your liabilities on the other side to make sure the equation balances. So there's your 44,000 equipment and 44,000 accounts payable. All right, that's number three. Number four, bought additional equipment for 9,200 in cash. So this time you paid cash. So you'll notice the two effects of the 9,200. So first of all, you have equipment going up, that's an asset, that's gonna be a plus 9,200. And then you're gonna subtract, anytime you see the brackets, that means subtract or decrease there's a minus 9200 of cash and also notice that in this particular transaction your total assets didn't change you just did a shift you took cash and simply converted it to equipment all right let me change all right and so that would be number four let's check out number five and on number five it looks like this is performed services for credit that means that you performed revenue, but they just haven't paid you yet. So if your client owed you, owed you money, we call that accounts receivable. So notice that's gonna go as an asset to accounts receivable. It simply means that you're expecting that cash to come in later, but you still call it an asset. And then the offset to that, anytime you see performed services, that's an equity item, we're gonna call that revenue. So you increase revenue and increase accounts receivable. So that's number five. Number six, paid salaries. Uh, 8,900 to employees, so you paid, that's gonna be cash. So notice down here below, number six, you're gonna decrease cash by 8,900, and then you have to have an offset to that, that's gonna be an expense, so you put that over here on your expense side. Right now, just put that in as a positive, because by default, this negative is already gonna say reduce equity, because that's what expenses do. So don't try to be plugging in a, a bracket there, or probably say it's not correct. So just plug it in as is on this one, Later on, when we get to the rules of debits and credits, it really won't matter. All right, seven, receive 6,400 cash from charge account customers. That's just simply collecting from your accounts receivable. So you increase cash and decrease accounts receivable. Notice those are both assets. You're increasing one asset, which is cash, cash and you're decreasing the other asset, which is accounts receivable. All right, that's seven. And the last one, it says you paid $26,000 to a creditor on account. That simply just means you paid your, your debt. So you're gonna decrease cash. And then here you're gonna decrease accounts payable by 26,000. And notice for every one of these transactions, every time there is always an offset to each, each side or to at least two accounts, at least two accounts are affected always so that the equation does balance. All right, last thing they then do is they, uh, they add up each column. So for cash, notice, they just took everything on this column and added them up in this circle that, and they came up with 88,500. For accounts receivable, they netted these two right there. They got 3,700 equipment. Add those down, you get 53,2. Accounts payable, you net those, that's 18,000. Then you got capital, you got a couple for revenue, 16,3 is your total, and then 8,900 in expenses. And then what you can always do is prove that each side is equal. So you could add your total assets 
and then add up or net your total liabilities and equity items. Don't forget that the expenses is a minus and each side should be equal. All right, that was number four. Let's check out number five. And on number five, they just want you to figure out your net income. So on this one, it says fees for computer repairs, guys, that's gonna be revenue. Um, and then you got advertising expense, which of course would be reduced. That's gonna be, that's gonna reduce your income. Salaries expense, also gonna reduce. Telephone expense, reduce. Fees for repair, for printer repairs, that's gonna be revenue. And then you've got utilities expense. And so down below, let me page down, you can see how they kind of put those into uh, your, your basic income statement format. You had two revenue items, which are increases, and then you had four expenses, which are decreases, and you subtract the expenses from the revenues to get what they call net income. All righty, that is number five. Let's check out number six. And number six, they simply just want you to prepare an income statement and notice the dates. This is gonna be on September 30th. So this will be for the month ended September 30th. Remember the dates are always critical with financial statements and accounting. Everything's about time periods. And so they give you all these items. And remember the only items you need for the income statement are revenues and expenses. So you could ignore cash. You don't need that, those are assets. Accounts receivable assets, remember those are balance sheet items. Office supplies, office equipment, accounts payable, capital, those are all balance sheet items. You don't need those. So starting here with fees income, you need that. So that's gonna go here for your revenue. And then the rest of these are expenses. You got advertising expense, salaries, telephone, notice those goes right there. And then ignore the draw, the withdrawals, that goes on the equity statement. You don't need that on the income. And so you've got three expenses, one revenue, subtract that, you get 218,400 for your net income. All right, that's number six. Let's check out number seven. And on number seven, they want us, you, they want you to do, uh, in this case, it looks like uh, equity and balance sheet. But remember, the, the, the way your financial statements go is you always prepare income statement first because income transfers to equity and then your equity statement goes to the balance sheet. So here's all of our items up here. And notice again, this is for September. So I'll just kind of go through these, you know, just to identify which um, financial statement these go with. Cash is an asset, that's balance sheet. Accounts receivable, asset balance sheet. Office supplies, asset balance sheet. Office equipment, asset balance sheet. Accounts payable, liability, that's a balance sheet item. And then here's your capital, that's balance sheet as well. The rest of these, like we just did in the previous problem, these are your net in, your income items. And of course, withdrawal is gonna go in the equity statement. So again, just to remind you down below that we came up with, I'm gonna use my stylus here. All right, uh, 218,400 was our net income. Again, that was like from the previous problem. So when we go to the equity statement, which is the first part of this problem, notice what they do. You've got beginning capital, which was given at the start of the problem. You add or you transfer over that net income from your income statement, that's an increase. And then that would draw 36,000. There's where you subtract that. That's gonna be reduced, your equity. And then you net those, that's a net of 182.4. You add that to your beginning capital, you should get an ending capital of 289,200. And my only comment on this one, because this is again from the author, is I do wish they would just put a bracket, I'll, I'll go into that right now, around that 36,000, just to, so you know that you're not adding that, you're actually uh, subtracting that. All right, now, now that you've got this ending capital balance, that's the balance that's gonna go on your balance sheet. So let's check out your balance sheet answer and you'll notice, let me clear that out. There is that same number that you just calculated from equity, that's gonna be your balance sheet item. Everything else you can just pull directly from up here. So you had accounts payable, just plug it in, that's your liability. And then you had cash, AR, accounts receivable, supplies and equipment, add those up, 312 add your liabilities and capital, you should both get 312, notice those balance. Think of your balance sheet as simply kind of like a detailed accounting equation. All right, that's number seven. Let's check out number eight. And on eight, they want us to, it looks like, and, uh, plug all these numbers into your accounting equation. And of course they want you to do analysis, which is just like any balance. So just to kind of walk you through these again. So notice they've got, 
your top row is what I call your expanded accounting equation where they individually list each assets and of course your liabilities. On this one, they, they just listed equity and capital. Uh, I don't know why they didn't plug in your revenues and expenses and withdrawals, but I'll still comment on that when we get to that part. All right, first one says owner invested $200,000 cash to start the business. So you'd increase cash, which is an asset, and increase your capital. Number two, paid $40,500 in cash for purchase of equipment. So you'd reduce cash and you'd increase equipment by the same amount. Notice that's the same line item. That's just an increase and a decrease to your assets. All right. Number three, it says purchased more equipment for $30,400 on credit. So you're going to increase your equipment and you didn't pay cash. It's going to be liability. So then you increase your liability accounts payable on the other side. Notice the equation, you are still balanced. All right, number four, it says you paid 25,000 cash to creditors. And so notice you're gonna reduce cash to 25,000 and then reduce your accounts payable by 25,000. All right, five, made an additional investment of 50,000. So notice you increase cash and then increase capital. That's very much the same as that first transaction. Six, perform services for 19.5 in cash. So notice you're gonna increase cash. And then they put this under equity. They should have just put revenue on here because that's actually a revenue item, but revenue is considered an equity type of transaction. So don't be confused by that, but just put that under equity as a plus. Seven, perform services on account. That's the same thing, except it's accounts receivable. And notice it's the same thing over here. You just increase capital. Eight says you paid your rent expense of 12,000. So you're gonna reduce cash. And of course that would be an expense, but since they don't have that listed as a heading, just put a bracket around that as a negative because that's gonna reduce equity. All right, nine says receive cash from credit clients, uh, 11,000. So you're gonna increase cash, reduce accounts receivable. 10, paid 15,001 in cash for office supplies. So reduce cash and increase supplies. That's just a, a, a shift in assets. And then finally, 11, a withdrawal. That's not considered an expense. That's considered a withdrawal, even though it still reduces equity. So you take that out of cash and you still take that out of equity. It acts just like an expense, but it does not show up in the, on the income statement. All right. And then, of course, the last thing you want to do is uh, you simply want to add up each column. And you'll notice here at the bottom, you've got total cash, your accounts receivable, supplies, equipment. You just, you just have to add the columns down. Same thing with your liabilities, net these, and then net your, your equity, you should balance. And then once you do that, you'll be able to answer the last question. Let me get my mouse back, uh, which is the ending balance for cash, which was 163,900. There you go. All right, that's eight. We got two more to look at. Number nine. Again, this is gonna be the same thing. Notice all these transactions, this is good practice. And on this one, the one difference is, is they want you to update the balance. Every, every time you enter a transaction, it's going to update your balance. It's kind of like a live ledger, which we'll get to that later on in Chapter 4. So again, a lot of these will be very similar to what we just looked at. Uh, number one, uh, notice that on this one, for example, they do give you beginning balances. So all these balances here have to be recorded first. Notice these are your, your same numbers from up here before you want to actually analyze and record these transactions. All righty. So let's get to it. Number one says perform services on credit. And that is 14.4. That's going to be accounts receivable and revenue. All right. Number two, pay 36.40 in cash for a new office chair. So you got cash, reduce, reduce cash. And then that's going to be an increase to office furniture. Three, receive 27.6 in cash from credit clients. So increased cash, decrease accounts receivable. Four, paid 18 20 in cash for telephone service. So you're gonna reduce cash, and then that's gonna be an expense over here on your equity. Five, sent a check. Remember, check is gonna be the same as cash, and you're paying your creditors. So 10,004 is gonna reduce cash, and then the other 10,004 is gonna reduce your accounts payable. All right, that's number five. Let me move this down. All right, there we go. Uh, six paid salaries, and so notice you've got a reduced cash of 21,160, and then that is also going to be considered an expense. Seven sent a check again, that's the cash uh, to pay the electric bill, that's another expense. 
So seven, notice that's a reduction in cash, and then there's your expense offset. Eight, perform services in cash. So notice you're going to increase cash, and then that perform services is revenue. Nine, paid 53.20 in cash for auto repairs. So that's gonna reduce cash. And then there's gonna be an expense. Notice you're not buying a new car, you're maintaining that's just an expense. And then finally, it is perform services on account. That's number 10. And on that one, that's just gonna be account receivable and revenue. And at the very end, then you, of course, you can net and get your any balances. And then at that point, you should be able to get to the analyze part, which is just gonna ask you the total assets part of it. All right, this is a good practice problem for you guys. All right, last one we'll look at is 10. And on this one, uh, it just says, you know, here's basically, they, they already give you the accounting equation already done. And they want you to complete this by, you know, plugging in your income statement items. So notice again, I always like to say, let me, let me write this one just as a, as a reinforcement. Just remember that income statement is always number one. Equity is then considered number two. And then your balance sheet is number three. An income statement goes to equity and your equity goes to the balance sheet. So that's the relationship. So down here, as you're looking at this, of course, this one, they came up with a net loss. That's going to reduce equity. But this negative 2314 should then show up on equity. And then whatever balance you get on equity should then show up on the balance sheet. So let me just show you that. So here's notice, here's your equity. Notice here's that loss. It's in brackets, so it reduces it. There are with withdrawals of three. And of course, see this ending balance right here? That initially will, or eventually, will then go to your balance sheet. There's that same number right there. There's that capital balance. So that's why that's the third one. There's your liabilities. And of course, there's your assets. Notice your balance. And also note the date. The balance sheet is the one financial statement that always just says one specific date on it. And then the last thing they want you to do is just whatever that, you know, just say plug in the number for balance or for, for your equity balance. All right, guys, I think that's it on your chapter two homework.